then let's have a national sports authority. National Sports Authority. National Sports Authority, can you introduce yourself to the committee? Thank you very much, Honorable Chair. Honorable Chair, I, my name is Honorable Ivan Sopoku Bobie, the Deputy Minister for Youth and Sports. I represent my minister, and with me here are... Uh, let, let them introduce themselves. Okay. Mm. Good afternoon, Honorable Chair. My name is William Kate, and I'm the Chief Director of the Ministry of Youth and Sports. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair. My name is Professor Peter Chumesi, Director General, National Sports Authority. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Abdul Majid Bawa, Deputy Director General, National Sports Authority. Kwekwe J. Labi, Chief Accountant, National Sports Authority. Honorable Chair, my name is Abdul Karim Tosa, Director, Internal Audit, Ministry of Youth and Sports. All right, thank you very much. You're welcome. Let's go to paragraph 3377. It's on your performance, your financial performance. You made us a deficit of 219,000 Ghana cities in 2019. Despite that, your GOG subvention grew by 2%. Your IGF grew by 162%. But your goods and services also grew by 77%. So you ended up with a, a deficit. Your liquidity ratio is also not good. And um, what was the reason for 77% increase in your goods and services between Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chair. Honorable Chair, the National Sports Authority then had, and even till now, substantial outstanding debts. Many of them electricity and summer days, which were uh, inherited. But of course, due to the lack of uh, funds and with the increments that we realized uh, in the IGF, as you can see, the IGF were able to grow it by 152%, which was able to then bring in some revenue and therefore be able to help us to defray some of the outstanding debts. So I think that uh, was the contribution. Uh, which eventually reflects in the goods and services expenditures. Thank you. Your, your, your 
The first part of your answer is okay, but you spoil it when you brought in the IGF. Does it mean that because you, you increase the IGF by 162%, you decide to spend the money? That's the meaning. If there were arrears, if there were bills, either water bill or electricity bill outstanding which you pay, I don't think that it will be that much because you have increased from 3.1 million, uh, 3 .1 million in 2018 to 5.5 million in 2019, an increase of 2.4 million. What contributed to that? It cannot be the bills. Robuche, personally, when I got in around 2019, the outstanding bill of the National Sports Authority stood at 30 million. 30 million? 30 million inherited. 30 million. Which bill is that? Yes, lots of them were for competitions, suppliers. You remember even 2019, some of our accounts were garnished due to some of these outstanding debts. Uh, some of our properties even got also by the court ruling to be sold to pay. The, the GOG were not coming at all, at all. And I think it has also still been even the same. Uh, just last year, I think I, I appeared here, and I mentioned to you, Mr. Chairman, I think early part of this year, about our challenge with the GOG releases, which goods and services out of uh, what we budgeted, only 2022, we had only 287,000 Ghana released to us for goods and services. So if there had not been IGF, intensive IGF, which we have done so much, it would have been still the, the debt increasing. But currently, I think we've worked so hard to be able to bring down the outstanding debt, which now uh, stands somewhere lower than even 5 million as we speak now. So is that the reason why Now, let me ask you this way. What percentage of your IGF you retain? Do you retain 100%? Robert, or? as we speak now, uh, we are able to uh, retain 66%. Okay. 66%, yes. Okay. So, when you generate the IGF, how do you handle it? I will let the chief accountant come in okay. and give the details. Chief accountant, if you generate the IGF, how do you handle it? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. We pay them into the holding account, and our portion is credited into the operation account for us. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Are you sure that you pay everything into the holding account? Mr. Chairman, for now, that's what we do. But in the past, what, how do you do it? Uh, I, 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 I'm not sure. I wasn't You there. say for now. So it means that in, in the past, past I wasn't there. From I wasn't there, Mr. Chairman. So now, all the IGF that you generate are paid into the holding account before yes, your portion is credited to your account. Yes, Mr. Chairman. We'll send people there to come and verify. Because the information I'm getting doesn't agree with what you are saying. Be reminded that you are speaking on oath. Be reminded that you are speaking on oath. Okay? Mm. Let's go on to paragraph 3385. Okay, go ahead. Chama, thank you very much. Um, were you, did you receive a letter from the, your ministry last year to lodge some IGF in excess of 299,000, being in excess of your own target into the consolidated account? A letter in April 2022. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I think uh, this particular letter at the time uh, when my... Uh, we, we appeared before you, uh, it came up uh, where the ministry, uh, not yet, despite our challenges with the releases from our GOG, indicated that still per the law. And I think you said it must still be uh, paid. Yes, exactly so. And ever since, and luckily, I have even a new 
a new chief accountant uh, who has been implementing that. Yes. So you have complied with the directive that you should pay the 299000 into the consolidated account. You have done that. You've, you paid. Please let me uh, check with my chief accountant to be able to provide that information. Mr. Chairman, uh, as it stands now, it remains an arrears, uh, which is to be paid. Uh, no, DG, yes. so you have not paid. You have not complied with the letter. The directive from your own ministry. No, the steps have been taken, and that's why I indicated no, no, to you no, that. No, no, my question was very simple. Whether you have complied with the 2022 April letter directing you because you have indicated that you have exceeded your IGF target. So the ministry says once you have exceeded, the excess of 299000 be paid into the consolidated account. And you were written to that effect. I'm only asking whether you have complied with this directive. Yes, we haven't. Yes, we have. No, we haven't. Then you can explain. We haven't paid now. But it's an arrears that has to be paid. <laughs> but you two very, are challenges. Uh, very well, Chairman. I remember we gave you that directive when you appeared in February. Yeah. Director General, the committee gave you an instruction. You refused to honor it. Director General, the committee directed you to pay the excess fund to the holding account. You refuse to do so. You are telling this committee now, because you want us to leave you too, that you can go, that, oh, it's an arrears you pay. When do you want to pay back? Yes. Honorable Chair, I think the committee's directive went beyond this, was that henceforth all IGF should be locked lodged in an account for our 60 cents to be given to us. Mm -hmm. Luckily, the finance ministry even has created for us that particular account, which was sent to uh, the holding account, which was sent to the National Sports Authority. And ever since, all IGF go into it. Yeah, yeah. The only challenge we had is the arrears that uh, hasn't been paid, but we, 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 shall, we shall get it done. Okay. Uh, DG, the, the instructions were twofold. One, because the auditors flagged the issue that the IGF was not being lodged properly. So it should be lodged before you, you deal with it. Now, the second most important one was that once you exceed your own target, we don't set the targets for you. If you set the targets and you exceed it, the excess should go back to Bobier and, 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 his, and his people. But so, so the ministry... After proceedings from here, the ministry followed it up with a letter in April last year asking you to, as it were, comply. In fact, it's actually in, in consonant with the 2015 directive that is in force that all excess, all IGF excess should be lodged into the account in question. So I'm surprised that July 2023, that that humble request from your mother ministry has been ignored. Has been ignored. And also from the committee, the, that instruction is anchored on the instruction from, that, from the committee during last year's hearing on this matter. And I don't think we are happy, but um, uh, there are other issues, so we deal with them before we come back to the chairman. Now, paragraph 3385 talk about the official vehicle stolen. Official vehicle stolen. The auditor says that from their review of the board minutes, an emergency meeting of the board on 30th October 2019, the director general reported of 
a theft case involving the authority's vehicle with a registration number GX6551-18, valued at 150,000 Ghana cities during an official trip to Kumasi. The auditors again noted that though a report was said to have been made to the police, management could not provide the police report to confirm the assertion. The anomaly resulted in the authority being denied the opportunity to use a vehicle for its intended purpose or purposes. This could also result in financial loss to the state. Auditors advised management that since the vehicle had been com comprehensively insured, a claim should be forwarded to the insurance company for its replacement. Management is yet to respond to the observation. Was the vehicle actually insured comprehensively? Thank you very much. Honorable Chair, yes, the, the vehicle was insured. And at the time the auditors uh, came to us, uh, we indicated to them that they, it was being investigated and the, the report from the police had not been issued. But as uh, we, we stand, it stands now, mm. we have the report issued from the Ghana police about the missing uh, vehicle. Yes, I have a copy here. Have you reported the theft to the insurance company? Yes, please. Eh? Which insurance company? Uh, QIC. Have they replaced the vehicle? Yes, so they have also responded to our letter, our claim, uh, also uh, making some uh, um, counterclaims that uh, they were they were having issues with our claim. Why? Honorable <laughs> Chair, the National Sports Authority has uh, a, a policy, a fleet policy. Hmm. very key insurance fleet policy with the QIC. Hmm. All our vehicles across the country are all insured by them. Okay. Anytime we get we receive a new vehicle, we send it to them to be added to that uh, uh, policy. Hmm. And then they issue uh, the, uh, the debit note for us to pay because hmm. then it's a debt. And that's what they did for the two vehicles that we received that we lost one of them. Okay. Now, when they realized that the vehicle is missing and we wrote to them that they replaced, they said that debit note doesn't re uh, represent uh, 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 agreement, which we, we disagree with them. We disagree with them because even the, the, the unit uh, head for the transport had requested for payment, and that had also been approved, and they, they would process it. They issued even a check to them and so on and so forth. And normally it's for all our vehicles. Sometimes if you get releases, we pay from January. If it comes late, Maybe by the last release so, in December. So what have you done about that? Yes. So since the auditor, sorry, Attorney General is our, 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 our lawyer, our legal, so we forwarded this letter that we received from the, the insurance company to them for advice. And that is uh, what we haven't really received. A, when did you forward it to the Attorney General? That was in June. I have a copy of the letter here. Since June, since June 2022, yes. And you and, didn't and, get... And their, and their letter was uh, on the 14th of April 2022. Yes. So, since you wrote to the Attorney General, yeah. forwarding the document to yes. them, did you get any feedback from them? Uh, no, sir. For over one year? No, over one year? No feedback from the, the Attorney General? The legal general. unit, uh, which the National Social Authority now operates with a legal unit, uh, which is headed by... Uh, uh, head of department, he has been following up on it for us. That's what I'm asking. So yes. one year, no response. We haven't received a response. We don't know why. So, th so that's the end. Is that the end? No, not the end. No sir. No sir. Even so, uh, what next? Management, uh, uh, because now at some point we got a letter from the attorney general. I think somewhere uh, last year that the National Sports Authority, paid the authority status. We can also even uh, recruit our own lawyer to pursue some of our legal cases. Who, so, who was using the vehicle? The, the vehicle was uh, a pool. At the time, we didn't have enough vehicles. It's I a said pickup. who was using it before it was stolen? Who was using it? Uh, yeah, Mr. Michael, uh, Michael Andor is a driver, a staff of the NSA, the driver to the vehicle. So, so he took the vehicle to Kumasi? 
Yes. Under whose instruction? Yes, I under under the director <laughs> general. Sorry. You sent him. You yes, sent him we, to we Kumasi. Had, uh, sporting activities. You uh, sent him to Kumasi. Yes, uh, yes. To do what? For a sporting activity. It was for athletics. Uh, so the driver alone drove to Kumasi. No, I I, I went with the driver. Then you were using the vehicle. Then you were using the vehicle. He's only a the, driver. You were using the vehicle. The driver, you see, because at that at the time we don't have vehicles, so the same vehicles was used for all officers. So I used it to uh, to Kumasi. It was also used for other people. And when he gets there, he used it to run for all our activities. That's how it is. We didn't have any vehicle assigned to Director General then. We didn't. It's a pickup. Pickup. We didn't have a vehicle. It was only later that we were able to so get So the vehicle was stolen at the gunpoint, right? So the, no, no, the, the vehicle, I think I, I remember it's order, order. The vehicle, the vehicle the was stolen was, at the gunpoint or what? No. The driver hmm. was sleeping with the vehicle in his hotel hmm. when uh, in the morning when he was to take the vehicle to also to pursue the day's uh, activities that he realized that the vehicle wasn't there. Which hotel? It is all captured in the police report. I say which hotel? Owas, Owas Hotel. There's a hotel in, uh, in Kumasi. They call it uh, Owas Hotel. Yes. Owas Hotel. Owas. Yes. So the, the management of a hotel knows that the vehicle was stolen at their yes. premises. When, when, it, when it happened, the driver was arrested. The security officer at the, at the hotel was arrested. The, the manager was arrested. Even mm. the director general was also to come and give also a statement at the police station. Yes, the, the, the police knows that the how, because it's a government uh, uh, property. And the, this, the this vehicle the theft, the story is very crooked. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, Honorable Dafamako. Yeah, Chairman, thank you very much. Uh, uh, DG. Uh, mm. Nobody is, don't take it personal. We just want to get to the bottom of the matter. Now, you were not present or you were not in the premises where the vehicle was stolen. You were not there. In the hotel? Yes. No, I didn't sleep exactly. in the hotel. Exactly. Yes. I so I just want to establish that. So when it was discovered that the vehicle has, has gotten missing, who lodged complaint with the police? The driver or somebody else? Yeah, the driver and the hotel the, uh, people. Hold on. Yes. The, the, the driver in charge of the vehicle. Yeah, yes, the, the driver in charge. Uh, what's his name? Michael Andor. So you can confirm that it was Michael Andor who lodged official complaints and not Emmanuel Afari Jackson. No, Afari Jackson is my uh, personal. Assistant. Yes, I, I'm, I'm, right. I, I don't want to go there. I'm saying yes. that you can confirm yes. that it is Emmanuel. Um, uh, Michael Ando. What's the driver's name? Michael Ando. Michael Ando, yeah. who lodged the complaint with the police. Yes. And not Emmanuel Afari Jackson. Please, the, 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 the police report is. Yes, I'm saying that can, you can confirm that. What, what I know is that the driver who is using the vehicle. Who is sleeping in the hotel all legally? I'm saying that you can confirm. Finds that uh, his vehicle is missing. He still has even his keys in his hands. He goes to the police to lodge complaint. Every document. You see, there have been a lot of media issues uh, uh, since DG, it happened. DG. So maybe that is why you are coming DG, from. But DG. Be be very calm. Yeah. I asked a very simple question, that you can confirm that it is not Emmanuel Fari Jackson who lodged the complaint. But the driver in charge of the vehicle, yes. What I know is that when the vehicle was missing, the driver was use the mic. Sorry. What I know, when the uh, the, the vehicle, um, the driver found it missing, he went to the police to report. So you can confirm that he lost the complaint with the police. He went, yeah. to, he went to the. I don't know the difference between what <laughs> because the the, 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 the hey, person who you are, has you are, it, you are a professor of biochemistry. The person with who all has, due respect, you know. The person so, who so has let's leave that. Let's leave that. <laughs> now, you wrote to you wrote to uh, the honourable minister in charge of your ministry on the 29th of March 2001, 
uh, in that letter at paragraph 7, you actually stated that the authority would like to state that the missing vehicle was insured against theft and accident. You still stand by this statement? Yeah, I I have this from the insurance company. This is a debit note issued on the January 29th. Uh, DG, with all due respect, 2019. A, de a debit note is not called terminals to an insurance policy under which an indemnity can be surcharged, with all due respect. But in, de in debit, de debit note, I may not be an expert, but I know the difference between debit note DJ, I know that you are know that you are you are educated to the highest level. Please, so don't play please, don't play please. that. I'm saying I'm saying that a debit note from an insurance company is not called terminals to an insurance a, a comprehensive insurance policy worthy of an indemnity for which it can be surcharged. You agree with me? Interpretation I may not have understanding. But I'm my, only asking my, you my, a my, question. my understanding is that we have fleet policy agreement with the insurance company. Okay, let me rephrase. And when we uh, let me rephrase. Okay. Now, two vehicles were acquired at the same time. Two pickups, actually. One is the one in question. The other one, at the time of the theft of the one in question, did the other one have have an insurance policy? Mr. Chairman, can I tender this information as evidence for you to look at it? The uh, two DG, can you answer the, the question? Please. DG, can you, can you answer oh. the questions before you explain? Yes, no. Then you explain your answers. The debit note here is for the two vehicles. I have already stated that the I've debit that note. The two vehicles received at the same time DG. were added to ours, and the two were insured. They DG. were insured. DG. The existing vehicle, does it have a comprehensive policy as we speak? Yes, sir. Okay. When was that policy taken? I have the information here. DG, from the this is July 2023. This is January 29th, 2019. Insurance cover policy QIC AD MPC 1816445P covering the vehicles GX655118 and GX. 655-657-18, two vehicles, in short. Comprehensive uh, motor insurance policy. Oh, okay, uh, uh, so let me assist you. Now, in 2020, um, okay, this policy was taken for a duration of one year. Is that correct? Usually it's renewable. So, it's so it was taken for one year. Is that correct? Yes, it's renewable. So, yes or no, it was taken for one year. Every, every I believe every Ghana's uh, current some are three months, some are six months. Legal, uh, one year. No, uh, some, are, some entities are taking <laughs> six months policy now. So it was taken for one year. Okay. So in 2020, did you renew the policy on these vehicles? Did you go back to QRC to renew them? Our vehicles with the, with did the insurance you, Did you company. go back to renew the policies in 2020? These two, two policies. The missing vehicle wouldn't be renewed. But all our no, vehicles, no, 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 no. All it, our vehicles oh, get DG, renewed every year. DG, please listen to me carefully. Two vehicles. One is missing. Two policies taken on them contemporaneously. So I'm saying the existing vehicle which policy would have expired sometime in 2020? Did the NSA go back to QIC to renew the existing one? Yes. The, the head of uh, transport unit makes sure that every year our vehicles are renewed. And since, since the others, the, the, the available ones were still in that fleet policy, they get renewed. Except the missing one, of course, if it's missing, which we are claiming for replacement. That I, I wouldn't, but all our vehicles every year get renewed. Excellent. 
how much did you pay for that renewal? How much did QIC bill you for that renewal? The information I have for the time, what, what they charge in relation to this missing fees, I have them here, but I do not have the figures for other years and the renewal fees and so on and so forth at here currently, but it can be made available. Okay. And in 2021, again, you went back to renew the, these policies for these vehicles. I'm laying a foundation. In 2021, you went back to renew the policies that were renewed in 2020, which were taken out in 2019. As I indicated to you, our vehicles get renewed every year. Every year. Okay. So the answer is that yes. So now why would QIC be fighting you, be contesting your claim of insurance cover, which is, which is, which is um, um, due under a vehicle that was insured under theft and accident? Why would they be contesting you on this? Honorable Chair, the response that is in the letter from the QIC, which we have forwarded same to the Attorney General for advice, they are contesting that at the time the vehicle had gotten uh, missing, the insurance had not been paid for. That is the, wh where they stand. They say it had not been paid for. And that for, to them, debit notes is equivalent of uh, 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 pro forma invoice, which it is not true. Debit notes means that transaction has taken place and that you are bound to pay. If NSA had uh, 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 refused to pay, they would have taken it out to court and retrieved every penny from it. And that is why we're saying that. My last two questions. Please, that's why we're saying that the Attorney General is sought for advice. But of course, they also have given us powers now that we can also carry out some of these legal uh, 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 claims. Uh, 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 yes. uh, DG, I, I, I get but the I believe point. That, yes. I get, yes. I get the point that you've written to the AG. When, when did you write to the AG? I mentioned Earlier. it June um, 2022. That's right. Yes, yes. And July 2023, no response from the AG on Ch this Ch matter. Chairman mentioned that also. Yes. No response. Yes. No response. Okay, I'll, I'll leave that. My final question. Between when the QIC gave you this debit note as, as money is due for the premium of the vehicles you insured and the time of the theft of the vehicle, what was the duration? Chairman, Between the question? time when the debit note was issued by QIC mm -hmm. to your, your entity for payment yeah. as premium for the insurance policies in question and the time of the theft of the vehicle in Kumasi, how long was it? The insurance was in January 2019 and the vehicle... Uh, the debit note was in January. Yes. yes. That's what you mean. Yes. but And, and the theft occurred when? The, the, if you see, the, the debit note has indicated that the policy effective date is 29th January 2019. It's indicated. He, the debit the, note was and issued the, and when? The, the, the missing vehicle was on the per this, uh, um, on 6th September 2019. So between January 2019? Yes, the same year. And September 2019, you yes. had not paid, you had not paid QIC? Ah. Ah. But, but, but usually, Chairman, usually depending upon availability of funds, it's availability of funds. When funds are not available... Honorable members, order, 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 order. Director General, the debit note, how much is it on, is on it? Yes, the total for the two uh, vehicles uh, was 5,597 Ghana cities. Is it comprehensive? Yes, comprehensive. In which year? This one, 2019. 2019? For pickups, two pickups. Two, two pickups, pickups, comprehensive? Two pickups, comprehensive, yes. So one, one vehicle, comprehensive, will be about 2,500? One is uh, 2,798, 80 pesos. So... 
how much did you pay to the company as a authority? In response to this debit note. Mr. Chairman, for this one, that is the amount. But the other vehicles... I'm asking. Yes, together. How much did you pay for this one? For this particular one, uh, it's a... Uh, the PV shows... You would have paid uh, 5000 the same amount as they quoted, 5,597, uh, 60 pesos. Yes. You, have, you have evidence of the payment? You have evidence of the payment of the 5,000? The issue check, yes, the issue check uh, here, the PV, the check. You no. issue check, not they. You issue check, <laughs> not the issue check. You so, issue check. Sorry, I was referring to, the, to my, my to finance. To the insurance company, right? My, my finance department I was referring to, yes. To the you issue company. check to the finance, uh, insurance company. Uh, yes, sir. What is the date on the check? Uh, I don't have the copy here, but I have the check number 492560. Have they acknowledged receipts? No, sir. So you make payment. They didn't pay you. They didn't give you receipts. You make payment to a company. They didn't give you receipts. Robert, uh, and you're I, okay with that? No, we are not okay because I'm sure... At the time, they had also seen that uh, they had been claimed or maybe heard has, that the vehicle... Has the money been debited to your account? This money, has it been debited to your account? No. According to accountant, uh, it has not been. So you have not made any payment? You have not paid anything to them? Because I, I'm told that they refuse to accept the check. You haven't paid? Yes. They refuse to... But it's a debit. It's a, it's a, it's a debt. It's a debt. So you haven't paid. Mo most of our payments, sometimes they even happen end of the year. It's to them, there is no policy. That is why they didn't take the check. The Have they returned the check to you? There's a policy. Have they returned the check that you paid them? Have they returned the check? According to, yes, according to the chief accountant, they returned the check. Chief accountant, check. have they returned the check? Yeah, Mr. Seller, I'm told so. The check was returned. I wasn't there. I wasn't, I wasn't there. But the information is... Sam George. Thank you very much, Chairman. Chairman, I just want to find out from the Director General, does the NSA have an arrangement for parking your vehicles in Kumasi at the Sport Hotel? The Sport Hotel in Kumasi. Whenever the NSA sends its staff of vehicles go into Kumasi, you normally have you have an arrangement where you normally park your vehicles at the sports hotel in Kumasi. No, we we we. If they sleep in any hotel, then the driver is there with the vehicle, but we do not have any arrangement of that nature. My understanding is that the sports authority normally would keep its staff at the sports hotel in Kumasi. Is that correct? I, I do not have so, but I think for the, considering the, the, the closeness of some of the facilities around our places of uh, work, it's likely they may be using facilities around, but we do not have any formal agreements with it. Well, it, it's necessarily a formal arrangement, but the understanding is that the sports authority's default hotel is the sports hotel because it is right next to the sports stadium. And that's where you normally would have your staff stay. They, no, there's no such arrangement, uh, MOU or whatever that is. I have that. not spoken about an so MOU. So we, we do, we do the, the, the preferences with the officer. Okay, so DJ, where, where, where they, do, they want to stay. DJ, a direct question to right. you. Is the day of the theft the first time that the NSA used OWAS Hotel? No, this driver has been staying there for, 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 for several, several times, several times. Have, what has come of the case with the police where Owas Hotel said their CCTV, because the hotel has a CCTV, Owas Hotel has a CCTV system installed, yes or no? I wouldn't know about that. Well, I have seen a police report that says that the CCTV was turned off on the day of the robbery. In this report... The police report I have here. In the, in the statement that was made by the manager of the hotel, they please, said their CCTV Please, I, I'm was relying upon this uh, document from uh, Ghana Police, an official uh, uh, Director General. Department, but Director I, I, General. I, I'm not aware of Di this. Director General. I'm not aware of
your 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 vehicle got missing at a hotel have you gone as sports authority to that hotel to see if they had a cctv footage at the time the vehicle got missing um the driver and the manager and the security officer uh together with the police came to the hotel to assess as part of your investigation and did they see that the hotel had a cctv camera system in place that that is what is new to me because i haven't really gotten such information uh, that you are you are you are leading, alluding to now so you are not aware that the hotel where the car got missing had a cctv system no, I'm, in place. I'm not aware i'm not aware honorable members um this is a very serious issue and um we will discuss it further. There are two options, either to search out the director general to pay the money or to refer him for prosecution. So we'll take one of those actions. But for now, we'll flag it. Let's move on. Paragraph 3390 is unaccounted expenditure, 68,328. Have you accounted for it now? Yes, uh, that, that has been done, yes. Fully accounted for, Mr. Chairman. Can you confirm? Honorable Chair, the total amount has been accounted for. Thank you. Let's go on to the last one for National Sports Authority, paragraph 3396. Unpresented value books. You have not presented four different value books issued to Ephraim Afienya. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, we presented them, they, 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 they've cleared. Yes. We have Ephraim here, we have Afienya there. <laughs> Ephraim Afienya. Has he accounted for the four uh, value books? Yes, yes. They, they. Auditors, can you confirm? Honorable Chair, confirmed. Director General, do you remember that when you appeared before this committee one time, a question was posed about the, the stadium? that when events uh, happen on there, the pitch is destroyed. And you, you give an information to the committee that you have uh, pitch covers that you use to cover the pitches. Do you still have them? Yeah, on, on which uh, any time such a uh, uh, event will require, if it's not sporting activity, of course, and require the use of the pitch, then that area will have to be covered. Yes. You told this committee that you have a pitch covers. Is it true that you have the pitch covers? No, NSA has not acquired its own, but we utilize that them. It's what you told the committee. Don't change it here and now. If you are changing it, tell us that you want to change, you want to amend your information you give us. You told this committee that National Sports Authority has pitch covers. Yeah, and I'm said, asking, we, do you have the pitch covers? We have, we, we use pitch, I think the, the do you was that, have do them? we use pitch covers? Do you have? Do you have? We don't own it, but we rent it. But you told us that you have it. Oh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, <laughs> you remember? There was even a question about the fact that why, we also... Where, where do you hire it from? Where do no, you hire it from? Oh, the, the, these are... Um, what, what, where do you hire The event organizers, from? many of them do uh, have provide for Who? us. Can you mention one of the event organizers from... No, I have to get the information from uh, Estate. Because anytime we have them, uh, events, they come with it. Even sometimes furniture, special furniture that are used, they are not owned by the NSA. But, but, we, but we bring them, yes. Director General, you are under oath. 
I'm reminding you are under oath. Okay? Anything you said there, here is being recorded. It is being recorded. We are recording everything. And we have it. All the sitting of this committee has been recorded. If it is not shown on national television, we have the recording with our own Hansa department, uh, audiovisual department. So please, uh, if you think that you can come to parliament, appear before this committee and go, nothing will happen, go and rethink. Okay? Just go and rethink. We don't want to do anything that will destroy you. Well, you hear from the committee through the report that will be issuing to the House. For now, you are discharged. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair. National Youth Authority. National Youth Authority, kindly introduce yourself to the committee. Honorable Chair, Pius Enam Hajida, Chief Executive Officer. My name is Baba Osman Dani, Director of Finance, National Youth Authority. My name is Emmanuel Anaman Mensa, Director of Administration, National Youth Authority. Thank you very much for coming. Pius, how are you? Honorable Chair, I'm fine, thank you, sir. Honorable Chair, how are you, sir? I'm doing well. know him. Yes. Papa is from Ketunov, so I know him very well. Then, will you exclude, uh, 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 will you He's not a yourself? small boy, he's a man. Exclude so yourself. don't mention that he's a small boy. There he's my man, not my small boy. Chairman's <laughs> small boy, there can be conflict. All right, let's, let's, go to, let's go to paragraph 3402. Honorable Akwesi Konedu. Chairman, conflict of interest. Thank you very much, Mr. <laughs> Chairman. <laughs> Mr. So Chairman, this has to do with the financial performance of National Youth Authority. Uh, they keep making surpluses, which is good, but just that it dipped by 7% uh, from 2018 to 2019. Uh, however, Mr. Chairman, I would like to interrogate just three line items in the statement of financial performance. And the first one would have to do with the other revenue bit of it. And that reduced by 14% from 80 million to 69 million in 2019. What could have accounted for that? Thank you very much, Honorable Chair. Uh, that is correct. There has been a decrease uh, in nominal terms from around 87 million to about, uh, no, 80 million to 69, 69 million. Uh, a reduction from the allocations that we received from the Digital Assemblies Common Fund. Oh, okay. Uh, your uh, perfect, uh, as that reduced, you also try to reduce your goods and services. By your consumption of fixed assets, that is your depreciation, uh, your, dep your fixed assets, that is your PPE, they reduce in value. By your consumption increased in excess of almost about uh, 
the twenty four percent. I felt like whilst they were reducing and you are taking some of your books, I mean probably uh, that should also be reflective, but that also increased. Maybe they are very aging and probably I don't know, but of more importance, you never had any other expenses in the year twenty eighteen. But in 2019, you had almost 665,000. What could have accounted for that? Mr. Chair, uh, in the year and the review 2019, there were a number of uh, uh, consultancy agreements that uh, the authority uh, engaged with which we did not do in 2018 and you have this line item for work in progress WIPs uh, from 57 million to 102 million I mean that keeps increasing it means you are not completing whatever projects that you are doing but probably adding on to them and I think and that would uh, be a bit of liquidity crash for you. You ought to complete some to put them into utilization. So how far have you gotten with some of these work in progress? Have they turned themselves into actual assets? Mr. Chair, uh, they still remain uh, work in progress, just that there is a strategy to uh, turn them into assets. And uh, that is why we have focused on a number of construction projects and we have suspended work on some so that we can reduce the number of items listed as work in progress uh, and so we can focus on uh, the other ones. I kindly continue to do that so that at least uh, the level of investment will achieve uh, some results. Although your, your liquidity ratio is good 15 to 1 as compared to 4.3 in the last year. Mr. Chairman, that will be all from me. Which which um, assets constitute the work in progress? Mr. Chair, the authority is constructing a number of safe spaces for youth congregation, the youth resource centers. Uh, those are the assets listed under works in progress. Okay. How many in all are you constructing? Mr. Chair, 10 huge ones, two small ones. Where are they located? The 10 in the s 10 regions, and then the two small ones, one in the Tuba and one in Mamponting. Okay. So are they in the regional capitals? In many regions, yes, but in some regions, uh, no. So in Vota region, is it the uh, Ho? It's Adaklu. Uh, oh. Is that the sports, the stadium? Those are the ones. Are they, are they under you or are they under uh, uh, the Ministry of Youth and Sports? Mr. Chair, what is in Adaklu is the Youth Resource Center, but we can confirm that it is uh, sports heavy because we know that the youth like... But you are calling it a stadium? Uh, Mr. Chair, many people look at it and call it that, but technically speaking, <laughs> it's a Youth Resource Center. <laughs> So, so the one greater Accra, where is it located? <laughs> Mr. Chair, it's in uh, North Kaneshi, the, the, the Azuma Nelson. Uh, so, what sport. is the state of completion of that one? Mr. Chair, the, the Azuma Nelson one is, one is part of the ones that are still listed uh, as work in progress. We're concentrating on six out of the ten so we don't stretch ourselves thin so we can complete in good time. And that's why those six are, are almost completed. In, the, uh, in this year, uh, work will uh, resume on the phase two of the North Kanishi. Okay. We are in July. Next week we'll enter August. Yeah. And you think that you, you resume work? Yes, Honorable Chair, we have the Minister's instruction to, to resume work. 
All right, let's move to the next one, paragraph 3411, Honorable Aziz. Thank you, Chairman. Chairman, the infraction here has to do with the uh, payment of board and board committee allowance without uh, an approval from the Minister of Finance. The auditors recommended that the authorities should seek approval from the Minister of Finance. I would like to find out if that has been done. Yes, Mr. Chair, in keeping with the uh, auditor's recommendations, uh, we have sought and received approval from the Minister of Finance, a have copy you, of which is here. You made it available to the auditors? Yes, Mr. Chair. Auditors, can you confirm? Honorable Chair, in June 2021, an approval was given to them, which we have cited and confirmed. Chairman, I yield to you. Thank you. The next one, paragraph 3417, Abu Yusuf. Chairman, thank you. Chairman, the infraction as captured here says failure to obtain VAT invoices. But as I go through the information provided, I see two infractions. So let's take them one after the other. One is that the Minister of uh, Sports, on behalf of the Youth Authority, engage Mrs. Uh, Joe Kinsley Hackman as a consultant, and you were supposed to withhold some tax and to remit same. It's indicated here that yes, you withheld the tax, but you failed to remit. What is the state of it now? Have you now remitted it? Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, we have retrieved an amount of uh, 40,000 Ghana cities and paid same to the Ghana Revenue Authority out of the indebtedness of Mr. Joe Kinsley Hackman to the authority. Mr. Hackman, the NYA is still indebted to Mr. Hackman and the rest of the payments uh, will be deducted. Whilst when the rest of the payment is done, the, uh, the, 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 the obligations, the tax liabilities will be deducted and paid to GRA. See you, I'm not, I'm not getting you. What I have here is that you have withheld 167,466.25. You have withheld that, but you failed to remit it. So the story you are given, I get confused. The point is, have you been able to remit same to GRA? Mr. Chair, there, there was an indebtedness of 167,000 to the GRA. We owe Mr. Hackman. So it is not that from my, from my recollection it is not that the deductions were made. It was that the deductions were not made. So we know that we, we, he, we, he has some money with us. So we took cue from the, the auditors and have now decided that we would deduct those amounts from the monies that we owe Mr. Hackman. And we have done that. Uh, in terms of 40,000, we still owe him about uh, 400,000. We expect to uh, deduct the rest of the about 100,000 before we pay him the balance. So what you are saying is that you fail to withhold the taxes? 
But what is stated here is that you have withheld it, and that's why I wasn't getting it. But I've now gotten you. You're saying that your outfit failed to withhold that amount of money, and now you are trying to get it. So you have paid 40000 out of it. When do you think the rest of it will be paid to Jerry? Because delay in uh, remitting this money is a source of worry, because we are all talking about generating revenue to take care of other uh, expenses. So when? Mr. Chair, as soon as we receive some money from the Common Fund and pay the indebtedness of Mr. Hackman, we will deduct uh, the monies that we failed to uh, deduct earlier on. L let me go to the second leg. And the second leg is that, but let me read this. It's very interesting. In the case of Mr. Arnold Barton, who is a board member of the authority, was engaged to develop a medium-term strategic plan for 2018-2019 for the authority. I want to find out from you, do you think it's appropriate to award a contract to a board member? Well, Mr. Chair, upon assumption of office, uh, I, I have checked and, and, I, and I asked, if you ask me uh, whether I will award a contract to a board member, I, I probably will say no. Uh, but I've checked and the history is that uh, the gentleman uh, has a wealth of experience in the subject matter. No, it's I, not about experience. You can't tell me that he's the only experienced person in this country in that area. So you started very well. It is wrong. It, is, it amounts to conflict of interest for you to award a contract to a board member. And so let's just, let's just leave it there. Accept that it's wrong. Perhaps you were not there. Okay? But that doesn't even justify that. What have you done when you saw that uh, this wrong has been perpetuated? What have you done? Have you canceled the contract if it's still in there, if it's still running? Mr. Chair, like I said, my understanding is that the company, the gentleman has some relationship with the company. I would not if I was there at the time. But the board, uh, as I have been so advised, does not en uh, engage in procurement. It is done by the entity tender who valued all of that and probably did award the contract. Uh, but as we speak now, uh, the observations and recommendations of the auditors relative to the payment of taxes have been complied with, and I can tender in the receipt uh, from the GRE, having received an amount uh, of 9,906 Ghana cities, 38 pesos uh, to the GRE in respect of that uh, consultancy service. I, I don't want to overstretch this issue, but I disagree with you when you said that the board don't do a uh, uh, procurement. The board have, they have a responsibility okay, to ensure that whatever happens there falls in line with the law. And so if they did not do that, they could also be taken on. Okay? But uh, the auditors are saying that you paid Mr. Uh, Arnold all the money without also requesting for invoices. What has happened to that? The, invo the invoices uh, have still been uh, have since been obtained, and then the the taxes payable to GRE deducted, or I mean, uh, recouped, uh, recovered, and paid. Auditors, what do you have to say? Let's let's avert our minds to the two issues, and then respond to them. Well, thank you very um, much, uh, but um, honourable. Hajide, uh, I know you were not there at the time, but it was wrong for that board member should be given the contract. It's a complete conflict of interest. It's a complete conflict of interest. A board member being given a, a, a contract. In fact, at the board meeting, when the decision was taken, he has the first-hand information, first-hand knowledge. So, 
even if a company that won the bid, you has a relationship with that company, he shouldn't have been, in taking that decision, he should have, he shouldn't have been part of that decision at all. But there is nothing here that shows that he wasn't part of the decision. So it's a complete conflict of interest. We, 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 we made the law for ourselves, so. And if we violate the law and we are not punished, other people will say, okay, Mr. A did it, nothing happened, so let me also do it. I will continue like this. It's not good. Could have asked this man to refund this money to, to the state. Yes, Auditor, do you have any information? Honorable Chair, for Amber Limited, that is Mr. Arnold Boatin, the total amount of 9,906.38 VAT issues has been sorted out. But for that of Hackman, um, it's still outstanding and we don't have any information about it yet. Uh, is Hackman's project a uh, uh, contract still running? Yes. Yes, sir. The contract is still running? Yes, sir. In fact, they, they even owe some of the contractors. Yes, sir. You haven't paid them? Yes, sir. Some of them are threatening to go to court. Mr. Chairman, uh, that's a correct observation. It's a fact, not observation. Sorry. Sorry, sir. The next one is paragraph 3424, Honorable Thompson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, there are two issues here. One has to do with uh, Automall Ghana, Toyota Corolla, that your, you pay, you purchased 2018, and you have to pay interest because you could not complete the payment at the time of the agreement. Then the second one, uh, a traveling ticket that you have to cancel when uh, I think uh, you were supposed to go to Angola, 6,000. So a total amount of 25,753. Chairman, the issue, the interesting aspect of it is that government could not pay feeding grants. So because of that, the total amount owed was used to uh, purchase food to feed students. As a result, they said that they couldn't have done anything, so they have to agree and pay the interest. That's the explanation that they, they've given to the auditors, that it is as a result of most of finance failing to pay feeding grant for two good years. Ten institutions, youth leadership and skills training institutions, so they have to use the money to feed the students. Chairman, we are your hands. Well, the auditors have advised that the authority should leverage on the existing uh, relationship with the vendors so that we don't get to this level. Um, the authority will definitely say that we are working on that. Is that not the case? Thank you very much, Honorable Chair. The authority will say we have worked on that. So we don't expect this thing to happen in the future? No, Honorable Chair. Okay, all right. If it happens, the auditors will report on it. The next one, paragraph 34, 31, Honorable Alex. This, thank you, Mr. Chairman. This has to do with some procurement that were done through sole sourcing. And it amounts to 288,265.20 persuasive. 
the auditors advise that thenceforth you should be seeking approval from the PPA before any single source procurement. Two, you say head of procurement, director of finance, and chief executive officer should in the future should in the future uh, obtain quotations from at least three different suppliers. And then another one too is that they say thenceforth you should be entering contract agreement with service providers. <clears throat> you should enter a contract agreement with service providers detailing the expected mode of delivery and payment terms by, by the authority, thenceforth. Why did you do sole sourcing? Did you, did you obtain permission from the PPA? That's number one. Number two, I will adhere to the, the piece of advice given by the auditors now. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair. Honorable Chair, the matter at issue here is that there are some expenditures of recurrent nature. For instance, the purchase of uh, air tickets for travel and the mere frequency of the pitches uh, makes it practically uh, impossible to obtain PPP, PPA approvals every time. And so the recommendation is that there should be a framework agreement to regulate that and that quotations from um, various service providers be obtained. Uh, the, the authority uh, has since done that and submitted a number of service agreements, cleaning services, uh, catering services, uh, air travel services, car rentals, a number of service agreements have since been uh, entered into. Uh, and so whenever there is a need for any of those uh, recurrent expenditures, we rely on the framework agreement. And uh, we have therefore complied with the recommendations uh, of the auditors. And that is why uh, in the earlier response to the chairman, I say that the authority is not just in the process, but we actually have taken the steps to prevent uh, the occurrence of avoidable expenditure, even in terms of interest payment on default, because the framework agreements have taken care of those ones. So it means, therefore, that the auditors are aware of all that you are saying now. Yes, Mr. Chair. Yes. Can you confirm that? Honorable Chair, we cited an agreement with the service providers. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Paragraph 3438. Absence of you sponsorship policy. The auditors saying that you don't have any policy on youth sponsorship. The auditors have recommended that uh, with approval of the board, you should develop a criteria for approval of financial support to individuals and youth groups with the aim of harmonizing and standardizing the way of operation. What action have you taken on this? Honorable Chair, the governing board of the authority has since approved a youth sponsorship policy which has been uh, vigorously complied with. Auditor, do you have a copy of the policy? Honorable Chair, we have a copy of the policy. Okay, the last one, paragraph 3445, Honorable Thank you, Chairman. Um, 3445, roof leakages on the Ajumako Afransi YLSTI Boys Dormitory. And auditors are saying that you awarded a contract to one Mercedes Nestra, Nestra Ghana Limited at a contract sum of 990,300, of which 940,785 has 
since being paid, leaving a retention of 45,450. 49,450. Now, auditors are saying that um, the leakages are uh, damaging the building. So, you should invite the contractor to the site to come and fix it before you pay the retention. Have the retention be paid? Honorable Chair, the retention has not been paid. It has rather been utilized to correct the identified uh, defects and uh, the institution has since been handed over to the TVET service in accordance with the Pre-Education Act, Pre-Tertiary Education Act. If I'm clear, it means you use the retention to repair the leakages on the... Yes, Honorable Chair, but the, uh, the contractor, the contractor uh, applied the retention to repair the, 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 the damages. Have you informed the auditors, please? Yes, Honorable Chair. Auditors, can you confirm if you've been to site and the correction has been made? Honorable Chair, our site inspection showed up that all the leakages have been fixed and it's now in good condition. Thank you. That will be all for them, Chairman. Thank you. National Youth Authority, you are discharged. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Let's have uh, Ghana Sports Export Promotion Authority, GEPA. Do we have any other agency available? Who?